Thank you, sir. All right. Go ahead, sir. I may just have one moment. Your Honor, there is um, there are two people that will be proffered. Um, but they're in the waiting room, the Sound Court's waiting room on Zoom. Is there any way the Sound Court would allow those two people in? Who are they? Amina Dia and Garfield Lemon. I do not have anybody in the waiting room right now other than I assume that your um, beloved wife, Miss Steele, is, um, is in the waiting room. And then I have a Justin French and a Kendi's iPad. So we have otherwise restricted that unless you're a witness or um, counsel since, the, since we are in a public forum. So if you want to make a phone call and have them join the Zoom, uh, but are they going to testify as a witness and what are they going to testify as to? Yes, I would proffer the two, but I thought you'd want to hear that. You can proffer them. That's fine, sir. Yeah, they're, 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 but they're not in the... They're not in the. They're not in the waiting room at this point in time. Your Honor, may I approach? You may. <coughs> may it please this honorable court, I wish to thank you for all the time that you give to everyone, always. Your Honor, on behalf of Mr. Jeffrey Williams, Mr. Adams and I respectfully request, along with the Honorable Avis Hornsby, bond to be set today. Your Honor, I gave a case law um, to this Honorable Court as well as the prosecution and uh, Mr. Adams. Mr. Williams is aware of this case law, Your Honor. And the first case I gave this Honorable Court is Coward, C-O-W-A-R-D-S versus State. It's 266 Georgia, 191. It's a 1996 case. And on page two or three of the copy I've given this Honorable Court and the parties, the right-hand side, it's in Division Two. It's 15 lines up from the last, the end of the paragraph, first full paragraph on the right-hand side. And it reads that the defendant's guilt or innocence of the underlying charge is not an issue at the bail hearing, especially since the defendant enters the proceedings cloaked with a presumption of innocence. And then the court explains that in the next lines, <coughs> Um, skipping two lines in the middle, the decision of defense counsel to bring the extraneous issue of guilt or innocence into bail proceedings did not preclude and goes on to another I'm not going to consider it anyways. I, I, I'm, that's well settled. That's a well settled premise, Mr. Steele. We can move on from there. In United States versus Solano, S A L E R N O, which is 481 U.S. 739. It's 1987 on page 14. Of 20? Correct. Okay, all right. And on the uh, left-hand column, Your Honor, in the last paragraph in the Division Three, the highest court wrote, in our society, liberty is the norm and detention prior to trial or without trial is the, the carefully limited exception. We hold that the provisions for the pretrial detention in the Bail Reform Act of 1984 fall within that carefully limited exception. The Act authorizes detention prior to trial of arrestees charged with serious felonies who are found after an adversary hearing to pose a threat to the safety of individuals or the community, and this is what I stress, Your Honor, which no condition of relief 
of release can dispel. All right, sir. In uh, Jones versus Grimes, which is G-R-I-M-E-S, 219, Georgia, 585, 1964 case. It's, it's cited off in your honor on page three of four. On the very top right-hand side, it's in Division I, the High Court wrote that excessive bail is the equivalent of a refusal to grant bail. And that's what my issue was. I just want to point to court because in the next case, which is Coleman, C-O-L-E-M-O-N versus state, 361 Georgia Appeal, 901. Your Honor, this came out recently, November of 2021, so maybe eight months ago. It's on page three of four. It's the uh, appellate court, or second highest court. He's talking about um, excessive bail, which obviously is equivalent to no bail. And then the court wrote on the, the left-hand side, on the, um, in, the, uh, um, in the paragraph that is indented, excessive bail is prohibited by the Georgia Constitution and the Eighth Amendment to the United States Constitution. For purposes of the Eighth Amendment, excessive bail is defined as bail set to an amount higher than an amount reasonably calculated. And this is what I'm stressing, Your Honor, to ensure the presence of the defendant. When fixing bail in Georgia, a trial judge's foremost consideration, and it's stressed in the text, Your Honor, is the probability that the accused, in this case Mr. Williams, if freed, will appear at trial, and to a lesser extent, which is also um, emphasized in the text, Your Honor, the accused's ability to pay, the seriousness of the offense, and the accused's character and reputation. A defendant who seeks release on bail has the burden of showing roots in the community that the defendant does not pose a significant risk of fleeing, threatening the community, committing another crime, or intimidating a witness. Your Honor, if you then look on the same page, on the right-hand side, the last paragraph, again, the court writes, and we're reminded, certainly we are not unmindful of the length of Coleman's pretrial detention and the presumption of his innocence. Your Honor, in Brown, which is B-R-O-W-N versus State, it's 314 Georgia Appeal 1, 2012 case, on page 3 of 3. On the left-hand side, in the second full paragraph, the appellate court wrote, the General Assembly, which is our General Assembly, provided for the creation of programs of electronic pretrial release to, among other things, assist sheriffs in alleviating jail overcrowding by creating alternative methods of pretrial release and monitoring and home confinement. Indeed, the General Assembly found that a, quote, program of electronic pretrial release, monitoring and home confinement incorporates modern, modern technology to accomplish various purposes. Thus, the General, General Assembly explicitly recognized a defendant's home as a place where he or she could be kept within bounds and restricted in movement for purposes of electronic pretrial release program. The next case, Your Honor, because we are going to ask for home confinement as an electronic monitoring. Um, the next case is Diallo, which the court already noted, A-Y-A-L-A -A versus State 262, Georgia 704. Your Honor, on page two, of three that I've given the sign of a court and the parties. The very top left-hand side, our highest court wrote, the purpose of a pretrial bond is to prevent punishment before a conviction and to secure the appearance of the person in court for trial. And then it goes through the four-part test, which is indented, Your Honor. On the left hand, or excuse me, the right hand side, Your Honor, the first full paragraph in the middle, our highest court wrote, in this state, unlike many other states, the presumption of innocence has always remained with the person accused of a capital offense, even during trial. The most fundamental premise of our criminal justice system is that a person ought not to be punished for a criminal offense until the state demonstrates guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. 
unless the right to bail before trial is preserved. The presumption of innocence, secured only after centuries of struggle, would lose its meaning. Your Honor, the last case is Dunn versus Edwards. If I gave it to you, if I didn't give it to you, I apologize. I'm no. Okay. I will uh, then hold it for a minute. And then the last, I'll say the last case. Did I give the court easy out bonding versus state? That is um, 224 Georgia Appeal 706, 1997 case. It's on page three of three, Your Honor. Second to last paragraph on the left-hand side. And the appellate court wrote, it is further assumed that appellant who has taken a financial risk, appellant in that case with the bonding company, in ensuring the defendant's present at trial would be motivated to keep track of the defendant's case and prevent the defendant's flight or relocation until the surety is relieved of its bond obligation. Such risk of flight is inherent in the criminal justice system without which there would be no need for bail bonds or bail sureties. We have a bail bonding company that is uh, here today, Your Honor, that will be uh, representing that they would be willing to go on Mr. Williams' bond. They have vetted Mr. Williams and they will uh, be heard. Your Honor.